It's been 15 years since uh, Jerry Bridges wrote the words of that fifth chapter that uh, we're studying this week. And his title, God's Rule Over the Nations, is, uh, and when you read the chapter, sometimes it's a little abstract. He even says that to us who live in America, that it is kind of a remote thing because our nation seems to be so well ruled, our lives at least, because everything, uh, we're not having insurrections and rebellions and riots and things like that like go on in the world. But God says something in Jeremiah one twelve that that comes to the heart of this issue which we're studying. That is God's sovereignty. Now, any of the attributes of God are the, those things that make him God. And the more we understand why he is God and, and the implications of that, the more we trust him and the more, as Jan said, our lives become stable. And, and I call it the daily benefits of trusting the God who rules the nations. But look at Jeremiah one twelve with me. Uh, I'm reading from the New King James, and it says, Then the Lord said to me, to Jeremiah, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Now, those of you that have the NIV, I copied that down. It says, uh, The Lord said to me, You have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. And those of you that have the New American, it gets even clearer. Uh, It says in New American Standard, Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well. For I am watching over my word to perform it. God's rule over the nations is most clearly seen. It's in the Bible, but it's most clearly seen in what the Bible contains called biblical prophecy. Look at that verse again, verse 12. God says, I am watching over my word to perform it. He says, I, the sovereign God of the universe have declared what's going to happen, and I'm watching over to make sure that what I have declared happens. Where do you see that most clearly? In the Bible? It's in prophecy. God wrote centuries ago what would happen, and it's happening before our very eyes. In fact, I last night uh, Bonnie was uh, watching me, and I was clipping headlines out of the newspaper on the screen of the computer. And, and she said, what is that for? And I said, Tomorrow, I said, for the ladies to see when they read the Bible and when you see fulfilled prophecy, it should encourage your heart that the God who rules over the nations and over all creation is also ruling over our little world, no matter what's going on in it. So, uh, what is the simplest and yet most profound evidence the Bible offers concerning God's rule over the nations? It's prophecy fulfilled. The irrefutable verification reserved to the scriptures. Now, just me saying that sets the Bible apart from every other book. Do you realize only the Bible has prophecy in it of all the religions of the world? If you examine carefully, uh, the Koran doesn't have any biblical, I mean, any prophecy. It doesn't declare what's going to happen in the future and explain it. The Hindu scriptures, uh, the, the Persian mystery books, the Book of Mormon, which is huge in America, no prophetic scriptures. Uh, the writings of Christian science uh, and every other uh, denomination or, I mean, uh, cult and religious group in the world, none of them have what we call prophetic literature. Yet a third of the Bible, when it was written, declared things that would happen in the future. Now, God sets this up, and if you want to turn over to Isaiah or back to Isaiah 41, I want to show you a, a series of verses that God used Now, the the conflict back then was idols. People were making idols and worshiping idols. And so God sent Jeremiah to confront the nation of Israel, saying, this is how you know who God really is. And I think we're at the same place in our world. There are a lot of idols. Uh, If you, we recently stood out here on uh, Sheridan and held up, and 61st held up our little pro-life signs, and I don't know if if uh, your cars had any response, but our cars going by did. We had someone that pulled out a coat hanger and, and were just shaking at us, and you saw all kinds of hand movements and other words and stuff. And my kids said, were those positive or negative? <laughs> and, and I said, well, the sticking up of fingers, that's negative. I said, the coat hanger swinging was negative, and the was negative, too. And they said, well, what were the positive ones? I said, the little honks. The people, did you hear the ones that went, toot, 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 toot? They were like clapping and, and all. 
But we have a conflict. There are idols. Abortion is people sacrificing their children to the idol of convenience, maybe to the idol of uh, their finances. They think children are too expensive or, or whatever. But, I mean, it's, nothing is changing. There are still idols these days. In verse 21, this is what the Lord says. He says, present your case. Bring forth your strong reason, says the king of Jacob. God is saying, you want to know who God is? I'll show you who God is. I will show you by one method. God says, I'm the only one that can tell the future. And I'm going to show you the future. And I'll take you through this, this study that he gives Isaiah. Because God is unique in that he has mapped out specific events in the future. And only the living and true God of heaven and earth has ever dared to say, let me tell you the future. In fact, he said that was the way you could know he was real and that you and I could place our faith and trust in him. And we know that's because Jeremiah says he is watching over his word to fulfill it. So look at chapter 42 of Isaiah because uh, God, well, let's go back to verse 23 of chapter 41 because I wanted to read a little further. Verse 23 of 41 of Isaiah, show the things that are to come hereafter that we may know you are God's. What God said is bring forth your case if you can. Verse 23, show the things to come, then we'll know that you're a God. So what God says is trust the God that knows accurately the future. So it's really a challenge. And what's sad is so many parts of Christendom are afraid of prophecy. In fact, I don't know if you know, but that... You don't hear much about prophecy in the mainline denominations because it's, they don't understand and they don't want to talk about it. So they don't talk about biblical prophecy. And that's tragic because a lot of those people in, that are believers in those mainline denominations are struggling with trusting God, but they don't know whether they really can. And so God says right here in 41, 21 to 23, show the things to come and you'll know who God really is. 